Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai guy here. How are we all doing today? Hope we all had a very safe and productive week and we're all doing well. All right, today's video is we're going to further um, on the water side of a tankless heater. And this is probably my second biggest question that I get through comment and um, uh, email is the piping for a dedicated or a thermal bypass on Renai's RURU units. So the RURU units are basically the ones that have the circulating pump in the bottom left hand corner of the unit and the unit is designed for a dedicated return line or you can put in their added thermal bypass valve which we'll be getting to in a minute. So with these units uh, if you have a dedicated return line, the pump will do 100 feet of half inch and 400 feet of three quarter. And it's a little confusing, I guess, to certain people that, you know, how to pipe it in and what to do and what fittings to use. So I did touch on it in a previous video where I was on one of my jobs, but, you know, the lighting wasn't good and it, it wasn't... I feel, let's do it here, show it. Uh, it's already piped in behind me, and we'll go through the whole thing. I got a dry erase board, and then I have the mock-up for the thermal bypass valve. So let's just jump in and get our feet wet and go over this. Okay, so as you can see here, here is, let me just make sure we're all in frame. Yes, we are. All right, this would be a, a typical installation. Now, of course, every installation is going to be different because of where the cold water pipe is, the hot water pipe, and the return line. So most of the time they're all within the line. So piping is a little different. I just spread it out a little bit more so you could see it. I'm going to step back. I'm going to give you time that you can freeze it and take a, a snapshot of it so that you can now have it, you know, on your phone or iPad or wherever. Okay. So basically when you go and disconnect either an older unit or maybe a water heater that has a dedicated return line, you're going to find, besides the gas and the electric and the vent, of course, you're going to find three pipes. You're going to find a cold water pipe, a hot water pipe, and a recirc pipe. So those are three. And now they all have to get back into the unit. So let's do the easiest one, hot water. Out of the unit, okay, now remember, this is the one that's got the um, valve kit and then the relief valve goes here. So there's no relief valve on the hot, a little bit shorter. So your hot water line is just gonna go boom, right into your hot water pipe. Always, what I like to do is when I disconnect the heater, on the wall in small letter with a black magic marker, I always write an H, a C, and an R. Cause then that'll tell me what each one is. So your hot water is out of the tankless, boom, bang into the house your cold water. You want to come out of the cold water and then immediately put a check valve. Spring loaded check valve only. Not a clapper valve. Spring loaded check valve only. I'm going to say it again. Spring loaded check valve only. That's what you want to use. They could be used in the horizontal. They could be used in the vertical position. All right. And just remember all check valves arrows to the tankless. And I like putting, these are check valves that are come off my truck. They got black arrows on them. I take them out of the box when we buy them and put black arrows so we don't forget them. We put them on both sides. So no matter which way we put them in, we see the black arrow. Okay? So good, good tip. <clears throat> so now, out of, the, out of the wall, cold water check valve. Down to a T, then up into the cold water inlet side of the tankless. Now you got two pipes done. Your return. As you can see here, now I'm going to let me zoom down just a little bit and re angle the camera so you could see it. Let's get it so we can see the whole. Okay, there we go. All right, so your return. From your return, you're going to put a drain valve, then a ball valve, then the check valve, then into the T. Now your piping is done. Now, the reasons for this. Okay, you want the check valve coming out of the cold water here. Again, let me get this back into 
frame here so that we could see and go over everything. All right, you want this check valve here, not here, because you want everything to flow smooth in. If you had this check valve here going up, all right, you're going to get water back up here from here. So you want to prevent this water from getting here and this water from getting here. All right, so we have the check valves. This drain valve, right now it's in the closed position. It's ready to be bled. After you do your bleeding, now we're going to go over that too in a separate video. You turn your water on in the house, you turn this on, pop the relief valve, get water out of the heat exchangers. Then you have a bleeder here and a bleeder here for the pump. Bleed out. Again, it's going to be covered right up to it to show you on another video. But now you want to bleed the loop. So, we shut. for those of you that know hydronic loop systems like baseboard and air handlers, you come out of the boiler, you go through the heating element, you come back down, you want to shut off the power side, the boiler side, the heating side, and you want to get the water through the whole loop. Now, let's go over to the dry erase board, and then I'll show you what we have. Let's get this in there. All right. So, here is a typical house. And no, even though my name is Michelangelo, I'm not an artist. You have your Renai, you have your Colt, you have your check valve, you have it go into your tankless. Then out of the tankless, you have your hot water. You go to one fixture, two fixtures, three fixtures, four fixtures, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Then it comes back, and it goes back into that T. You want to shut off that ball valve right there so that you can bleed this whole line and come out of here. When you get no more bubbles, no more air, nice smooth water, shut you off your little valve, your hose outlet, turn your valve on. All right, let's get back here to the tankless. So then you turn this back on and now you have circulation up into here then you have to go and bleed the branch lines that are coming off that loop once you bleed that all and yes it sounds like a bit of work but it will prevent the pump from getting airbound and on your separate controller which is that MC195-US you'll end up with a code 63 meaning the pump is either not spinning fast enough or not spinning at all Okay, so following these steps and piping it in this way will make it correct. So, of course, hot water out, boom, right to the pipe. Cold water, check valve, up into your um, valve kit. Then out of your recirc, a, a drain, a valve, a check valve. Again, all both arrows going back to the tankless, back into the T. All right, now, let's say... Let's say we do not have a recirc. So let's take the recirc out of the equation here. So we don't have a recirc. We're going to leave the check valve in because I don't have a piece of pipe big enough right now. So we don't have a recirc. So now you have just hot and cold water coming out of so right now when you get there all you have is hot and cold water but you sold them an RUR unit but you, and you want to use the recirc. Well there's option number two. Cold water into the cold water side, hot water out into the hot water. Then you're going to include it with the RUR unit is our thermal bypass your thermal bypass valve all right there's a hot water hot water in then your cold water then your hot water up to your sink and your cold water we're going to go over the mock-up you're going to see the whole thing in a minute but this is what it looks like if you notice you have that rounded front then you have this embossed piece two screw holes there's only one way for it to go on. Boom, like this, up against, and let's get over to the mock-up, and we'll show you right now.
All right. Here is your typical sink. Now, you're going to find, I find that it's either the bathroom sink or the kitchen sink. 95% of the time, it's the master bathroom all the way on the other side of the house. But I do get kitchen sinks. And every now and then, it might be like a guest. But it's a bathroom. So you, you have a vanity. A vanity with most likely a 4-inch or an 8-inch center set faucet. And I lost something. Oh, okay. And two speedies with two, with two speedy valves and two speedies that go up to the faucet. Now, you have the thermal bypass valve with you, you got some of your tools. Well, after you're done, that's what it's supposed to look like. You see it? So basically, we took the two speedies off the faucet, and we connected them right to the thermal bypass. Because you're going to have 3-8 flare by half inch uh, speedy nut, and these are half inch speedy nut. So. Where is my thermal bypass valve? These have off a half inch speedy nut. Do not use a half inch female by 3.8 uh, adapter fitting. It will leak, no matter what you do, unless you find one that has the washer in it. But if you do it this way, it'll work the best. So you take your speedy nuts off, you put them right down to the thermal bypass valve, and then we use a speedy that has the half inch faucet nut by half inch faucet nut, right in and then two screws into the back of the vanity bobs your uncle that's the way it's supposed to look now if it happens to be a high-end faucet or one of those delta faucets that have the 3.8 speedy already built onto it with a 3.8 nut then you're going to have to use one of those speedy extensions with a union but you can coil everything up neaten it all behind the trap the the, the homeowners have never complained that you don't take up any room because they're not, you're not using anything under the trap where they do storage. Because that's the biggest complaint you're going to get. So, that's it. You have your hot into this side, your, uh, the cold into here. So this thermal bypass through the circulator in the pump, in the unit, is going to circulate water and it's going to go from the hot into the cold. There's a thermal, the word thermal, there's a, some, there's a thing in here, which we'll get into later, that actually activates, shuts down, sends this pressure back to the unit, shuts the pump down. The pump also will cycle during the day, but again, when we do the parameters and the um, MC195, I'll go over that. But this is the way it's got to look underneath the sink. Okay, now let's get back to the tankless, and we're going to go over... Okay, wrong way again. All right, now... This again will be touched on when we get o go to um, the parameter settings on a unit. But in the unit, when it comes from the factory, let me just, because I got them in little bags here. From the factory, right here on the hot water side, there's another kind of plug that almost looks like the water filter on the cold water side. Installed from the factory is going to be this device. This is the plug. The plug that will operate the dedicated return line. If you're going to use the um, thermal bypass valve supplied, it used to be with this little device with this little hook clipped <coughs> to the heat exchanger piping, but now it's inside of the box. So it's inside with the instruction manual. This plastic bag with, let me get it out of here. This filter. So you're going to remove the plug you're going to pop that plug, you're going to remove the plug that's here, pull it out, and that plug is going to be onto that kind of lightish brown plug. You're going to pop it off and you're going to replace it with this filter. Make sure the O-ring is in there and put it back. You see they give you O-rings? And put it in. Put the plug in this bag and slip it inside of the unit in case they ever run a dedicated line because of, of a renovation. 
it'll be there for you to have. And now you're set for um, thermal bypass. Now, there will be a video coming up, most likely it'll be next week, to continue with this um, uh, end of the tankless heater, where we're going to go through the parameter settings and show you the difference between dedicated and thermal bypass and economy and comfort mode, long loops, short loops. But that, not to make it one massive uh, um, video, but let me just grab something here. If you want to read up on it um, prior to next week's video, <clears throat> excuse me, go on to or get grab if you happen to have an RUR uh, Sensei installation manual, go to page 51 and 52. 51 and 52 will show you the parameter settings. Hitting the A button for two seconds, then go up and down, and there's parameter one, two, three, four. It skips a few to 14, and each one is a specific function of the tankless heater. Just go, you know, go into those 51, 52, read through it, and then next week, we're going to do the whole setup. This, you know, we power it up and go through the whole thing. All right? So, again, non- uh, return line and then return line if that's what you have. So grab a shot of that. Again, the piping is going to be different, especially on an exterior unit. They don't pipe them in. So if you happen to be the contractor installing this and the plumber puts in the, un the, the water piping, they're never going to give you enough room. So you're going to have to do a loop the loop. When I do a house, and we do it in Upanor, cold is blue or clear, but blue. Red is hot and recirc is clear so that we know which one is which. And if we happen to, if the plumber happens to run the hot and the cold and we come in there to do the gas and the tankless and the recirc, we run it clear and we run it away so we have enough room to put all of that um, valve, drain, check, all of that within an area and not to make it look so ugly. All right? So, um, okay. Starting next week, add it to the videos. I did a tool video where I showed what tools you need to do a tankless <coughs> Excuse me. Well, I'm going to show one or two tools every week, um, which I highly recommend you should have in your tool bag to we bring them in when we install and service the units. All right, YouTube? All right, so in that, now, oh, and if you want a drawing, email me, send, shoot me to my email, which is in the description below, your email, and we'll scan and send you a, a, a nice drawing, not like the dry erase board <laughs> um, to you on the piping. But if you take that, you can take a screenshot of what I showed, it, it pretty much will, will do. But if you need one drawing, we'll send it to you. All right? So if you got a question, you got um, some uh, a comment, uh, put the comment. My email, again, will be in the description below. Send it to me. I will answer or tell you, here's my number, call me. Um, again, I appreciate all of the subscribes, all of the emails, all of the comments, and thank you everyone, whoever has emailed Renai, uh, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, just keep those questions coming and enjoy your forever hot water. All right, YouTube, I will see you on the next video. You take care now. Bye-bye.